Hey guys, so this week uh, we're still down in South Carolina, but we're actually kicking off the week at Herd It Here Farm. And Zach and I are gonna be cooking some wild turkey for a, a group of the community here to taste. We've got country music artist Taylor Ingle here. He's gonna be performing live. And it's just gonna be a nice little intimate event. The Bobby recommended honey and horseradish mixed together. Yeah, hey, get your paws away. He said, make your tongue beat your brains out. Hold that. Okay. Now I was trying to figure out how to get this into the bottle. I did tell him, that is very good. Mm. I did tell him to put it into a glad bag because I thought it would be easier, which I think I was right. Yeah. Um, or to actually have just poured the honey directly into the bottle and then the horseradish into the bottle and then stirred it up in the bottle. Bobby made that is some good sauce. I've never done that one, never even heard of that. Memories made as that sunset fades. What I get to relive those days, but you can't go back like a step in time. You gotta have fun while you can in the spine. Yes, bittersweet to see it back in things. You can't get those moments back here that gone like that. And just like that, we're back at the Wapula. This time all those kids are gone and it's Mary's turn to hunt. And I've promised like 30 times that I'm not gonna shoot a turkey out from under her. So I'll try my best. I better just sit a little ways away from her. That way I can't reach over and grab the gun from her. Good to be back. So I've been dying to get a bird down here for the last couple of years and Bobby knows last year I came down and he'd said I could hunt but then Zach <coughs> and Shannon <coughs> ended up shooting a bird and so Bobby has so kindly said that I could come back this year which is really special because this is the only hunt that I'm actually doing this season because I'm pregnant as you all know. We're coming off the youth hunt, there was a lot of success at the youth hunt as well. Wow. Um, I believe we're hunting in one of the properties where a few birds got away. There's mm -hmm. still quite a few around there, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot of birds left and more birds moving in. Now, yeah. they're, now they're breaking up and the hens are starting to nest. And I'm uh, taking my daughter in the morning too. I Yay. think she'll be doing real well. Perfect. Yeah, so Amateur's looking forward to it. And uh, so we're all charged up, ready to go. Awesome. And I think tomorrow will be the best gobbling morning that we had all week because Perfect. the weather's getting better. It's not going to be foggy and uh, pressure's gonna be back up again, so Great. it should be good gobbling in the morning. That box call you've got, that lynch box call, how long have you had that box call? Mm, I killed my first one when I was six years old. I was saying, with that call? I've been alive for 34 call. years really? at least. Yeah. You still have the rubber bands on it? Yeah, no. <laughs> they didn't have rubber bands back then. They didn't. <laughs> Lucky I didn't have a car with all the birds that was killed on it because there wouldn't be no wood left. <laughs> like some people do. Now, I, I got it, Daddy got it some, he was, it was on Easter, I was in first grade, and Mama says, you got to take now Bobby this weekend out with you to the mill. Because um, you know, I've already been dove hunting with my 410, because I don't stand by myself. And he's, on the way there, he had him in that box call. He said, I bought this for you yesterday at the hardware store there in Mott's Corner. He says, um, you got to learn how to use it. And I said, Daddy, I know how to use it. I've used your, your calls in the house. And I hit it. You know, he said, that sounds good. He said, you can go to the first intersection. That's as far as you can go. He said, okay. Well, you couldn't hear nothing the first thing. I saw him, wah, saw on that mail. I said, I'll go to the second intersection. The second intersection is about a mile and a half. I get there, I didn't know it, but I had that call in my pocket. It didn't have a rubber band around it. And every time I walk, I go, and when I sat down and pulled it out, and he went, right there, I heard him running. It's like a horse coming around the corner. I was at an intersection. And I was 410. And I put that shell in there, and I clamped it down, I cocked it back, and he turned around that corner, bow, I rolled him. I said, it looked like a Mack truck to me. So oh, I red, sure. white, and I was a little old fella. I said, you know, I'm like I'm shooting in self-defense or something, you know? <laughs> and I get up, I go to run, and I said, wait a minute, I killed a turkey. <laughs> and so, and I saw those dog tracks on the ground everywhere around there. I said, you know, I can't just leave him here. Dogs might get him. And I'm thinking about what am I gonna do with him? So I took all my shoelaces out my boots, Tied them together, got a little dogwood tree, and I tied it around his neck and jumped off the tree. And the turkey came up, and I tied it off. And I took off running, I couldn't run with no shoelaces. 
No, so I took the boots off, and it was cold. It was in March, March 15th, and it was probably cold. I ran all the way back there, got Daddy. I said, Daddy, I got a bird. What? The next thing you know, we went, picked it up, and he, but, we rode around. We showed everybody that bird. Well, wasn't there a, a man with your dad? There was a man with a bow tie from New York, <laughs> buying, buying a cross tie from him. And he would, it looked like Barney Fife. Okay? <laughs> and I, he kept saying, son, that's okay with you. Daddy said, no, you can kill the bird. And he got in the back seat with us, and we forgot he was even back there. <laughs> <laughs> we drove all over Monk's Corner, Charleston. Showing everybody. Showing everybody. And finally we realized he was back there. And we asked him, he said, well, we saw you, you got to catch a plane. He said, not now. Yeah. He said, you people here, y'all just wait for the next day to do things. He said, I like this. He said, y'all just put things off. And I said, yeah, we do. And, uh, anyway, he stayed with us for two weeks, and my mom says, when's that guy going to leave? Yeah. You know? Dad says, well, I'm going to get him a job. <laughs> but it was crazy, man. But he moved from New York, moved down here. It's like the way of life here. Hmm. I worked at another mill. Mm -hmm. I feel very lucky to get to wear this vest this morning. I feel like it's like my um, super, super power. You know when superheroes have their capes? This is my cape. My fox vest. I've got to add one thing to it. Hold on, guys. I'm going to put my snack and my hunting license with my shorts, actually. Yeah. I don't like to do things how everybody else does it. And I want to say a big thank you to Shannon Rolanda for letting me borrow your 410. I feel like uh, me borrowing the vest and the gun is very much in line with Mr. Fox and the Mossy Oak Companions theme. So, thank you guys. Hopefully, I'll have a good morning.
finally pulled the dang trigger. I literally saw that bird coming from so far away and I had in my mind red dot on, put it up, everything. He came out perfect strutting. I, I put it up, put the dot on his head. Some stitch thing in my belly. Turns out sitting against a tree pregnant for a while is like super uncomfortable. I have one hunt this season that I was going to do because it is getting tough for me to see it. I've already got cramps now from sitting against that tree and I really want it to be down here at Wapawula. Um, this is a special spot and Bobby Mead's a good friend of ours and so getting the chance to shoot a bird down here has meant a lot to me. Getting to shoot it in this vest that Jason Hart has lent me, the Mr. Fox vest, makes it even more special. Um, and obviously being here with Zach too, that was, <laughs> didn't quite go how I wanted it to in the beginning, but it turned out exactly how, how it should. And I'm very, very grateful for this bird. And it's a nice misty morning. And I love hunting on a low foggy morning like this. It's super special. And Bobby's been texting me all morning saying, are you on birds, are you on birds? So I'm excited to let him know. The old Benelli click got her this morning. Oh, if y'all could have heard how many cuss words I was saying in my head. I'm glad it worked out because if not, I was probably gonna get yelled at in the truck for being mean later. I think she forgot about it. It's pack up day. They're all going to Florida turkey hunt. Yeah. We're going just a shade north. We're going to Alabama. But good times at the Wapula. We got a baby new shotgun, new decoy. Oh my gosh. Okay, she's already killed her first turkey. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are going to have a fun time. Yeah, we're going to shoot us a Osceola, I hope. Go for it. Right, It'll be good. Go. You want to go with us? Yeah, he does. You want to go with us? He'll go on any adventure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank oh, you have... again for letting You're me get welcome. get the bird and for spend some time here. It was awesome. I'm great. Special don't, as don't always. Don't stay here all you want. We can, we can have don't say long. that. You'll come back and we'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Just have to start cleaning turkeys for everybody. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> all, right. all right, you guys have a safe drive. Bye-bye. As soon as yeah. Bobby pulls out the gate, I'm going turkey hunting. Yeah. <laughs>